Hey, welcome to Yes Shift, a very special heavenly birthday episode to Mr. Keith Emerson. The tie-in to Yes Shift, of course, is Prague, Carl Palmer, etc., etc., etc. Plus, he's was great friends with Rick Wakeman, very close to Alan White. Yeah, Steve. And, uh, yeah, my name is Stephen, and uh, yeah, we're talking about the Keith Emerson book by Chris Welch, and there are quotes from a few Yes members. <laughs> in there uh rick wakeman Lots, Jeff, actually yeah jeff downs steve howe um i feel like there's another uh, one uh, um yeah uh, uh, yeah a lot <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> but also yeah. other notables like chris welch um keith's kids oh alan white is also quoted yeah who alan oh white. and and mari i'm kidding Mari Kawaguchi, his fiance, his his previous wife, his yeah. Eleanor. So 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 much to unpack here, but we don't want to spoil it. But we want to tell you this: if you're a Keith Emerson fan, if you're an EOP fan, if you're a prog rock fan, if you're a keyboard player fan, if you're a classic rock fan, you've got to get this awesome book. The link is in the post right yeah it Links is. In the, don't go there yet let us tell you a little <laughs> bit about it without too many spoilers and by the way i have to give a disclaimer may i uh sure it's a father-son show but he's in charge <laughs> so wait you're not uh oh, i guess he, he's gonna straighten me, straighten me out so a little disclaimer <laughs> we look a little grungy and we're sitting in a moving van because i flew to where Stephen was living somewhere in california which you probably all know if you follow the show and this morning we moved him to a different part of Southern California. Had a very interesting mishap along the way. I'm going to use a word I've never used before. Okay. I've heard it. I've never used this word. We came really close to being blown to smithereens, as Yosemite oh. Sam would say. We were gassing up a moving truck, and it just started pouring out of the gas tank. We grabbed our laptops, jumped out of the cab. I called the fire department told the guy it, it was really scary and it delayed our whole trip by four hours we planned on doing this from a different environment but we wanted to come on and talk about keith so i don't know where we begin but i have right. some ideas yeah well i just wanted to say real quick that you know sometimes we touch upon these prog things because of the yes connections but i feel like even if there weren't those yes member quotes in this we still would have talked about this because you know keith is such a huge part of Prague. Yeah. And, you know, we got sent the proof copy uh, PDFs in advance, so we were able to finish reading it uh, shortly past midnight last night. Yeah, it was, it was funny because we started it the day before separately, and then we were in yeah, the Yeah, I started a few days ago. Yeah, I and I started the day before. Then we I flew out, and last night we're just... Uh, in the room not talking for like yeah a, we don't even have the tv or music yeah, on and so every nothing. once in a while i would hear you like chuckle at something like some funny <laughs> for like quote three from hours and we yeah. finished it like 15 minutes apart yeah which is funny surprisingly you got to the end before i did but that was i was like switching between uh stuff so yeah one yeah. of the things i want to mention and again we're just going to give some anecdotes we're not going to spoil the whole thing you've got to get this book it's it's beautifully put together it's smartly put together and it's all quotes it's all quotes basically right wonderful pictures many pictures i've never seen some stories and information i've never known but one of the things i want to mention that was mentioned over and over steve was yeah. the pseudo sort of fan perceived yes EOP rivalry that may right. or may not have Yeah, existed. like depending on uh, the speaker in the book, like if someone said it, it wasn't was a different. thing or was overblown, others like even... Said yes, it was almost a feud. Yeah, even yes, band members like... Um, Chris I, I Welch think, said that too, I think. Yeah, Steve Howe said there was kind of competition between the drummers and the keyboardists, but thankfully like as a guitarist, he didn't have a uh, competition really it, and because it doesn't seem like that was really the case right and um alan uh, there's a quote from alan uh, saying that he and carl didn't really get along like way back then but once they like yes and i think Asia Asia Tour, together, yeah the, the, yeah the one we for, saw for uh, he, that he was like that's when i got to know carl better and he was a nice guy and so it's kind of funny how in their youth they kind of i guess maybe were kind of competitive as like prog rockers and like with age they just become like better friends they, we mature yeah you'll get there yeah <laughs> speaking of there. maturing speaking of maturing his birthday is on the fifth 
What? Can I say how old you're going to be? It's a six. Six. Did I say fifth? Yeah. Did, did you change it? No. <laughs> can I say how old you're going to be? Uh, sure. This can't be. If you can remember. <laughs> 22, 28 years yeah. old, the, the youngest of our 11 blended family kids. Can't believe it. So regarding the feud, here's the yeah. thing that hit me when I kept reading that over and over. I kept thinking, if it was real, and it's not, but if it was real, imagine EOP and yes. Okay, so there's three guys with EOP. Forget the Powell thing for just a moment, even though that was lovely. But there's basically three guys against... All these other people coming through the revolving door of the yeah. Yes Institution. So my question is, if it was real, every time a new member came in, did they like sit them down and say, okay, here's the company scoop. A, you got to dress like this. B, you got to behave like this. And those ELP guys, you know, like, was there a talk? <laughs> well, how would that yeah. have been with so I, many, what, 28, 42 people? Yeah, in the I mean, it's funny because, you know, Steve uh, talked about a couple of times when, uh, he was almost in the nice, and he also like recounted yeah, like I didn't know about that. Yeah, and he also recounted uh when he called Keith like after Vangelis auditioned, and they realized it wasn't gonna work. Like, but when they were gonna do relay or but before game Patrick, and like he was sort of courting Keith, and then of course after that they get Patrick who was in a band with the guys from the nice so like other than like it's Keith, like, like so related yeah. it's unreal <laughs> and um there's oh, also uh, 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 Sorry, uh, you go, go you go, well, um, there's a quote in this other book that's relevant to this, which we'll get back to the Keith book, but this is relevant. So this is um, the Yes Close to the Edge tour book. It might look backwards for you, but I got this at the Yes show I went to recently. Uh, the Godly Brothers did another great job with this. And there's a quote in this. Um, they interviewed not just the current Yes lineup, but also Eddie Offord and you know, Eddie worked with both bands. I forgot that he, which yeah, like, I read like the, the book. Yeah, yeah, the song Are You Ready, Eddie uh, from Tarkus, I believe, is about him. I so, totally forgot um, that he did their first album. Yeah, so in this uh, Close to the Edge 50th anniversary tour book, uh, Eddie mentions how, like, uh, around the time of the Close to the Edge tour from 72, uh, Greg Lake kind of uh, <laughs> went up to him and was like, you know, you can't work with both bands. You've got a decision to make here. And then, of course, Eddie ended up choosing uh, oh that backfired yeah yeah there's something else i forgot yeah or you still want to no that was pretty much okay. it that's kind of like so there's like a maybe that's like a little bit of a mini rivalry there's also a funny going for the one anecdote which is in the book it's very fun but yeah what were you about to say a couple things one is and i want to see if this is showing up on the is it showing up on the drum talk tv page um, and i'll share it to I'll my check page. and it, so i forgot about the led zeppelin connection that when they were looking for a new manager they wanted peter grant and and there was a there's a whole thing in there about that that's very interesting i also still find it odd that steve how would have the audacity to ask <laughs> keith not to join us but to leave elp yeah. <laughs> that's like what what do you like really steve and we just interviewed steve kind of recently but here's the other thing um when you remember when steve is talking about how elp had just finished recording works and yes yeah. was moving into degree yeah that's the uh, anecdote i was alluding to yeah okay and and the, i'm going to say a little bit about okay, it because it's yeah. hilarious also I, um we're not broadcasting on drum talk tv but i'll share the video today okay. right now uh share it to my personal if you can too um, i'm not company? logged in on oh, okay so 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 steve talks about how then the guys said yeah do you want to hear what we've recorded <laughs> and the yes member said sure and Steve said they played it at like 128 decibels. And Steve said, can, can you play it? Can you please turn it down? And they were like, no, no, we can't. And I just thought that was so funny. I think that was hilarious, especially given that that was 1977. When you think like, eh, yeah, maybe 76. It'd, yeah, it'd be start, a little yeah. more acceptable to Steve than <laughs> it might be now, you know, as a 70 whatever year old. So I, I that was one of my favorite anecdotes. We're getting hit by a nuclear, like, heat wave as you can see here yeah and um the led zeppelin thing you brought up reminded me that um you know this book goes through like he's like not just in the nice and dlp times but also like it like three and uh the high voltage stuff and just like you know it really goes through all that one of the things that i kind of forgot or maybe i didn't even know because i was kind of surprised to read this was that uh keith uh along with chris squire and alan white 
I guess, opened for Led Zeppelin at a reunion show. Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't remember hearing about that, so I don't know if I did know or and forgot, or, but yeah, it was just, it felt like new to me. And yeah. it was like, there is, I, I think Simon Kirk might have had something to do with that as well. I'd have to that look That sounds up later. familiar. Yeah. There's a few things in there that I either forgot about the ELP history or or didn't even know. And I've been into them since I was like 12, which goes back to... Uh, 1975? Five, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Can't even do my own math. Yeah, and it's not just a Yes-centric book, just so we're clear. Like, there are very right. some nice nuggets for people into both Yes and ELP, but they also go through... You mean it's not just key. an ELP-centric book? Right, it's not, yeah. this isn't just a Yelp review, like a Yes-ELP review. Um, right, right, right. But, um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they also uh, go through, uh, like, his... Uh, family life and um also like you know hearing about what was like with him and eleanor and it was a cute story and then all the later stuff um and like you know romance stuff and family stuff and just how how much the kids loved him and also like um you, you know it, it's not just about the music it also like gets really deep into like his his persona yeah. as a man his a couple of his roadies managers other musicians from all over and i i want to say something a personal note there's a photo in there that was taken with of carl and keith the same night i first interviewed carl on trump talk tv back in 2014 at carl's art unveiling in beverly hills Lori shub hi Lori, and i were out there interviewing i was interviewing carl and i saw the picture and i recognized it right away because keith was wearing the same thing and Coincidentally, so was Carl. Not as each other, but the same thing as that night. So here's the thing. When I, Lori said, oh my God, there's Keith in the corner. And I said, I've got to go up to him. And I'm not fanboy. I, don't, I just don't do that. I respect people's privacy. And I've been interviewing big stars for over 10, for 10 years. But Keith Emerson, one of my biggest, biggest, biggest musical influences, I went up and I just quietly said, hi, Keith, my name's Dan Schinder, Drum Talk TV. I'm here to interview Carl and I held out my hand and I said I just want to thank you for the decades of so much music and he quietly smiled and said hey thank you and we we chit chat a little bit there's a lot of things about Keith in there about his persona his personality that I felt just from that night and I'm going to tell you something else that happened <laughs> that happened that night and I thought maybe I I'm just creating this own image in my mind you know, because it's Keith Emerson, but there was something so much about him that was not what I expected. Not that I expected him to be a dick or anything, <laughs> but I did not expect him be, to be so soft and warm and personal. So during the night, after I interviewed Carl, we're still hanging out, and there's this giant bookcase. I wander over to the bookcase, and Lori's on the other side of me, and I'm looking at the books, and to my left, out of the corner of my left eye, I see Keith walk up and starts looking at the books. He pulls one off the shelf. He says, hey, Dan, I think this one's for you. And I said, Keith, I said, can we take a picture? He said, I don't know. I said, Keith, <laughs> come on. And he was messing with me. I could, can we please take a picture? He says, can I give the finger? I said, you can give both fingers. So we, where's the camera? So we posed and it was Neil <laughs> Zlauwauser's books. Neil, I hope I'm not butchering your name. And, and that was the night. I spent some time with Keith and everything I thought maybe I was making up in my head about him and his personality, every single person quoted in that book says the way I, he was the way I felt about him, right? He was yeah. just a genuine He had a great guy. sense of humor and that... That's uh, why he and Rick Wakeman got along so well. Yeah, it was but, never a feud. Or yeah, and I remember um, when I met Rick uh, five years ago, I asked him because... Uh, I remember reading on John Anderson's website that John, I guess, want, was trying to get he and Rick and Keith to do a thing, and Rick was like, I don't remember John being part of it, but record companies are trying to get me and Keith to do it in the 80s and 90s, and then in this book, um, we hear that like Rick and Keith were trying to plan a concert in like 2006, and I won't spoil like what the idea was, but it's really hilarious. Oh, yeah, I forgot and, about that. And also the way they interacted with people, sort of overhearing them, like that was a funny thing. That was hilarious. Um, and in a cafe, that yeah, was hilarious. So, so Rick had really nice things to say about Keith, and you know, when I hear the words keyboard wizard. I'm used to thinking of Rick with that phrase because you know he the wizard cape. Yeah, the capes, but it it was 
You know, in the book, Rick says Keith really was the first On keyboard top. wizard, and that's, you know, such a gracious way of saying, yeah, Keith kind of, um, he got in the spotlight a little bit earlier than Rick, if you look at the release order of things. And he and was doing things slightly, well, that's an understatement, <laughs> but technologically more advanced than Rick before Rick was doing things. But something I, I meant to talk to you about last night, right. that I'm going to, one little spoiler. Okay. Um, I want to say how astonished I was at how adventurous he was. I knew he was into motorcycles and cars, but the diving and the flying and, there's and the a, skiing. Yeah, and the skiing, water skiing. And there's a picture of him in the bathtub with, uh, I think, Aaron next to him. And Keith is laying there and has a shark about maybe three and a half, four feet long on his tummy with the face of the shark right here in the bathtub. What yeah. the <laughs> Fark. Yeah. I mean, he he was... It was a heavy read for me, especially the closer it got towards yeah, the to end. The, yeah, it got really deep, and you, you kind of got an understanding of what Keith... Was, you know, there are a lot of pressures, and people were saying that it was like he was competing with his younger self type of thing. And, and I... Like, it will get heavy, but overall, like, it's... It's beautiful. Yeah, the, the book, like, just... You know, we got to remember Keith the way he was, like, he's such a virtuoso and he's so influential. He influenced Jeff Downs and lots of other people. Like, And, you know, when I got into other bands beyond Yes and Asia, you know, ELP was, like, I was really impressed right from The Barbarian, that first song on that first <sighs> record. It was such a huge impression Keith made. Um and, you know, of course, like, several days from now is Greg Lake's, what would have been his birthday as well. So, and they passed close together, Yeah, like, too. nine months apart. I remember um, I was really sad hearing about, like, Keith's death, and then uh, I told a friend about it, like, that's why I was feeling bad that day. And then nine months later, Greg passed away, and that was heavy, too. But, um, yeah, Carl's been, you know, carrying on the legacy and... Um, uh, there are like young Keith Emerson and ELP fans. Like, it's, it's just nice to know Half that. Half your people, age. Yeah. There are. Yeah, it's just nice to know that the music still carries on and inspires, you know? It, it, and it won't expire because when it came out, every album, except for maybe Love Beach, it was ahead. <laughs> it was ahead of its time always. And. Steve and I were talking about how interesting it is that there were always com people, fans were comparing them and butting yeah, them against each but other. But like they're not that Anywhere much like each other to at us. All. Yeah, I see Yes as hearts and flowers, flowery <laughs> hearts music. And I hope that's not offensive to anybody. And I see ELP, other than the acoustic stuff, as gladiator music. Yeah, maybe Relayer is kind of like that. Yeah, it, you're right. And somehow they juxtaposed in that world of the prog genre, but there's no way you can compare them. They're Not because one's better, but they're just so different, just because they're in the same... Like Brahms and Tchaikovsky, they're both... They were classical composers, but nothing right. alike. Yeah, I mean, know? like... It, it, to sort of compare to another medium, um, Marvel and DC, it makes sense why oh, people same. would like <laughs> would look at that as a because there are so many like similar characters, even though there are nice different spins on some of them. But those to me feel more similar. Like I, I do know the differences, but to me, like overall, they feel more similar to each other than ELP and Yes do to each other. Yeah. yeah. Um. So share one more anecdote and or something that surprised you that you learned or forgot about. And, and then I'll do the same. And then we'll um, leave it to you all to buy the book. It helps fund what Keith's condition was with his hands. I'll leave it at that. You'll read about it in the book. But it's for a great cause. And it's a great piece of history, this book, with all these quotes by dozens of wonderful people that, that knew him. Yeah. Um, and while you think about it, I just want to mention, I, I did meet Mari Kawaguchi on a couple occasions the first time I met Keith. And then what was the year I said I saw Yes in Phoenix in the round when Dylan I, was playing drums? That was 2017. So in 2017, I saw her again backstage and she looked like she was doing really well. And I had messaged with her a few times in between after Keith had passed just to kind of know she was being thought of. and. You know, I just yeah. can't imagine. So, so Mari, you're a very strong woman, and 
Uh, anyhow. Yeah, I well, for surprises. yeah, uh, one that came to mind just now was movie related, but I wasn't sure if that was the one you were gonna no, say. No, so go oh, for oh, it. Not? Oh, yeah, how, um, uh, you know, it's funny again, like, um, you know, Keith was considered after Vangelis, and then later in the book we hear that, um, he was considered for the movie Chariots of Fire, like to do the music for that, but he, he didn't think the script was that good, and Van Gallis ended up doing the music. How for bizarre, that. right? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It really is such a small world, that generation of musicians. Um, also, so I wanted to mention, let me think, I'll pick. No, that's too much of a spoiler. There's some great spinning piano info in there. Mm. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the thing about, I forgot about the fire. The fire at his oh, house yeah. in, what's the name of the city? Um, Ch I don't Chilgery. remember off the top of my head. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, their main home that they lived in that was built in the 1550s. And then um, I forgot about the fire. And it was amazing how one of the most important things that survived was his box of music for the piano concerto or mm. concerto for piano. But the, there's a funny story in there about how one of the people who you'll know stayed there and Keith went to great extents. And then this guy found out he did this all the time to tell this ghost story about the house from the 1550s. The guy who wrote Peter Pan was a previous owner in the lineage of this home. So he tells this ghost story and then late at night, he had this false wall that shared in the master bedroom that shared the room with the guest room and in that false wall would open he had chains hanging so in the middle of the night he'd rattle the chains and bang on the wall after getting someone all riled up already about a ghost story i loved that yeah it just showed the kind of fun loving man he was and very magnanimous to his life which we yeah. all should be we're none of us are perfect so ryan chris welch interviewed a lot of people and i'm sure could have interviewed a lot more because you know Keith knew so many people and it would have been like an even longer book you know but the way that uh, he tells it you know it tells like all the essential stuff and is very thorough and you get to see perspectives of people when they met Keith for the first time and what they thought of, thought of him and just how that felt like you know meeting their hero type of thing um, so yeah lots of people Robert Barry um, like yeah. lots of Rocky the roadie right like they're just lots of people that you, you know it's a real great work that uh, Chris Walsh put together uh, so yeah you could get that Keith Emerson books .com, and it's from rocket 88 and it's, yeah it's a great book um, like the only uh, like one of the other um, things I remember reading by Chris Walsh I've read like a few essays I'm sure but the one book I remember reading is uh, Close to the Edge, The Story of Yes, probably one of my favorite books. So it was interesting going into this one. And I, I think I may have forgotten that it would have pictures in it. So I was kind of expecting... Like, of an exhibition. Like, so I was kind of like, when we got the PDF, I was kind of expecting just like chapters. And I was like, okay, this is going to be cool. But then seeing And the I didn't expect the whole is, thing. Yeah. I didn't expect the whole thing. We got the whole book ahead of time which was awesome yeah like and like the picture like lots of the pictures are unseen like we said before so it's a really great illustration of keith and who he was and just how he touched everyone's lives you know? and i and i want to thank very much sharon chevin who who's our connection through the publicity connection.com sharon you've been so here i am <laughs> generous and and kind with um you know, hitting us up saying, do you want to interview this one? Do you want to interview this? <laughs> so we will be interviewing Chris Welch and Aaron Emerson. We're yeah, just yeah, we're going to try. Um, hopefully schedules align. So, yeah, and we'll see about that. And we will talk to Carl Palmer again about this amazing show he's putting together with the late Keith Emerson and the late Greg Lake playing alongside Carl. It's going to be amazing. He told us a little bit about it in my previous interview. You can look that up on Yes Shift or Drum Talk TV. Um, I think it's just on Drum Talk TV. Um, the Carl Palmer interview. What? You didn't share it? Because I was, I mean, I shared it to Yes Shift, but I didn't okay. upload yeah. That's right. <laughs> so look for that. Um, we will be talking to Carl again. And we will talk to Aaron and Chris. We'll make sure that that happens. So thank you so much for following what we do. If you have comments, ideas, questions, love mail, hate mail, <laughs> you can reach out to us at yesshiftpodcast at gmail.com. 
And you can follow us at www.facebook.com slash yes shift. Look up yes shift on YouTube and you can follow us on Anchor. Yeah, anchor.fm slash yes shift. And there's also a support button. Uh, so support us or don't. You could just listen. Yeah, like, get the book yeah, first. Yeah, get the Keith Emerson if, book. If you've it's got great. some change left over, <laughs> otherwise, don't worry about us. Take care of Keith's legacy. Buy the book. You'll love it. I pro if you don't like it, I'll buy it from you. you got to be honest. <laughs> It'll come out of Steve's paycheck. Wait, um, wait. So uh, I also wanted to mention that I have a meeting in five minutes to talk to some very special old bandmates of mine. This is the first announcement that has to do with a 10-year Drum Talk TV anniversary that's all I'm going to say now. Follow Drum Talk TV. We'll be 10 years old in January, putting on a show in March. It's going to be freaking epic. Wow, that kind of hurt my ears. <laughs> oh, and Elias. Sorry, Elias. Elias of Sun Hill. Yeah, my dog. Us. Yeah. Moved all the way down here, big boy. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for following what we do. Go get the book and then chime in. Let us know what you think. Write us and we'll... We'll let you be part of the review process and we'll forward it to Keith's people. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. Bye.